Let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Ju Young Park. I was born in Los Angeles, California to first generation immigrants. My parents worked very diligently and very hard to try to provide for me the best life that they could. And growing up in that situation, I started to understand a few things. I started to understand that if you have more money, you're able to do more things than others who do not. Would you agree with that? Now, money is not everything, right? But money does provide lots of opportunities. Would you agree with that? So, Atomy is a tool created to help individuals who would otherwise not be able to become successful. I'll say that again. Atomy is a simply a tool that helps regular individuals, average individuals, become successful. So, how is that possible? And why is that necessary? A lot of individuals that I speak to on a daily basis will say that you get what you deserve in a positive way. That means that you are able to create as much wealth or as much outcome dependent on your personal ability. So if you have the ability to do certain things, then it is inevitable that you will succeed in that arena. But if you do not have the ability to do those things, then you will not succeed in that arena. For example, if I, Ju Young Park, at the age of 33, want to become a NBA player, how likely do you think that will be? But anything is possible, right? No, not really. Even if I practiced every single day for 10 hours a day, I don't think any of the NBA recruits will look at me and I will never be their first pick, right? Even though I work hard. So just working hard does not necessarily mean success. There has to be something else that comes along with that. So you need certain types of abilities. And the question today is, do you have what it takes to succeed in Atomy? Is Atomy any different than other companies? Is it a little bit easier to succeed in Atomy? Or is Atomy just like any other business where you will be limited in terms of your ability? Because many people here, including myself, am limited in what we can do. If you do not have those specific needed skills in that area, then you will not become successful. So I learned this the hard way. From watching my parents, I was able to see what it means to own a business, how much hard work it takes to maintain that business, and what it means to actually grow the business. I helped my parents start many businesses because they weren't able to speak English. So it was inevitable that I had to follow them and uh, I had to translate for them. So at a young age, I would follow my mom, and she would go to the bank with me, and she'd tell me, all right, son, I need to get... $50,000 loan, right? And she would tell me this, and I would translate. I would say, okay, my mom needs $50,000. And then I'm like, well, what else do you need, mom? And I would translate these things, and I was in the third grade, elementary school, doing these things. So I started working at a young age, right? She never paid me, though, right? <laughs> so I would do these things, and I would understand, ah, if you want to start a business, you don't have to go to school. All you have to have is good credit. And collateral. So when my mom told me, you got to go to school, what do you think I said? I said, why do I need to go to school, mom? I want to be a CEO. In my mind, I thought being a CEO was what? Simply owning your own business. So I started to learn these things, but I started to understand that there are different aspects that we have to try to tick off before being able to move on. So the things that I want to talk to you about today is ability, okay? Where are you in terms of ability? And where are you in terms of effort, okay? So I think a lot of individuals that I speak to, they have a lot of effort. So if you work hard, you know, you'll, you'll say that your effort is very high. So let's say a one to five, one to 10, let's say you're a 10 over here, okay? But even if you work really hard, like I said, if I don't have plus, what? The ability to become an MBA player, if I don't have that ability, if this is also not up, then this doesn't equal success, right? Would you agree with that? And a lot of individuals then want to try to create what we call active income to passive income. But let's talk about these things first. Everything breaks down together. These all go together in hand, okay? So when we talk about active income, we're talking about 100% of our labor, our ability. For example, if you want to be a doctor, 
then it is your responsibility to graduate from a four-year university, go to med school, do all the things that you need in order to become a doctor. Would you agree? No one else can take the test for you. You have to have the ability needed to pass those exams. Even if you work really hard, put in a lot of effort, if you don't have the ability to pass those exams, will you become a doctor? No, but that applies for everything. So if you need certain skills to become successful and make a lot of money, then individuals who don't have a lot of money usually do not have that because they lack the ability to create the wealth. They only may have certain aspects ready, but not the rest. So as you listen to this lecture, you need to brainstorm in your mind, what's he saying? Does this apply to Adamy? Does this apply to me? And as you listen to the lecture, you'll begin to puzzle pieces together to show you that you can be successful. But let's start here. So everybody who knows this, they know that to create active income, there are different things that you can do. The first thing I want to talk about is A, a job, okay? Everybody raise your hand if you've had a job before. Raise your hand up high, up high, up high, okay. When you have a job, there are things or requirements that you must do, right? If you do not do those things, what happens to you? You get the boot. What's that? You get fired, right? So today, it's raining. It was raining when I came in today. Let's say that you wake up in the morning, and it's time for you to go to work, but it's raining, so you decide not to go to work today. What will happen tomorrow? What will happen tomorrow? Oh, raise your hand again if you've had a job before. It seems like you have not had a job before. <laughs> if you call your boss and say, sir, can't go to work today, it's raining, he'll probably respond, you don't need to go to work tomorrow either. <laughs> right? You will lose your job. So there are things that are required of you even in a job, right? So you need the ability, what? You need to be able to manage your time and do your diligence in terms of the things that you need to accomplish in that position. And as you do those things, we are promised a promotion, right? So people work hard to create a larger income. So if you want a good job, it is necessary for you to go to a nice four-year university, right? And after going to a nice four-year university, it is probably um, behoove of you to what? to go to a master, get a master's, right? And some people even go on to get a PhD. And how many years of your life are you investing in order to get a nice job? Think about it. So let's minus all the school years that you went all the way to high school, okay? So after high school, you go four years and then master's two years, and then sometimes it takes time to apply and manage more skills needed, whether it's language skills, whether it's personal skills in terms of people management, whether it's software skills in terms of Excel, PowerPoint, or whatever it may be. So add another year to that, okay? So that's going to be a minimum of seven to eight years needed to get a good job. And what is a good job? That gives you a lot of money, right? So eight years of your life, you've invested to get a good job. So what is a good job? from uh, your point of view. Is $5,000 a good job? 5,000 a month in Australia, is that all right? No, yes, maybe so, no? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> all right, so 5,000 to $10,000, yes? All right, so I think a lot of individuals are actually from the 3,000 to 5,000 range and some will be 5,000 to 10,000. But the question is not how much do you make, the question is how much can you save? Because a lot of people will make $5,000 a month. It seems like a lot, right? But guess what? You're not saving anything because the cost of living is high, right? You have to house yourself, you have to get a transportation, you have to feed yourself, all these things. So a lot of individuals will work this job for about 15 years. And at about 15 years, your age will be about 40, right? Graduate from high school, go to university, get your job, and then 15 years later, you're about 40. So what age is 40 for guys? This is called midlife crisis, right? 
This is what happens. So at the age of 40, a lot of individuals realize that, huh, I'm not really left with anything. I want to do something greater. I want to do more. And individuals who want to do more usually have this figure in mind, right? Because you won't think about those things if you've already retired because you can go do charity work, right? You can go do other things. But let's say that this individual now wants to do something more. What can they do then? From, B, from A, they have to do B, and B is sales. So what's sales? Sales equals low risk, okay? This means that you can do your job, you can do your 9 to 5, whatever it may be, and you can use the excess time that you have, the extra time you have, the weekends or the nights, whatever it may be, to try to create extra income, okay? Extra income. Does that sound good? Okay, lots of people want to create extra income, but then we have to think about two aspects of extra income, okay? Do you want to try to create something that is lasting, or do you want to create something that is just for that time? Raise your hand if you want to create something that's lasting, Exactly, right? You want to try to do something that's going to create residual income or passive income. So it has to be residual, meaning that they have to continue to want it, continue to buy it, continue to need it. And when that occurs, it becomes passive, okay? But residual income for you will also be active income if you have to continue to make them buy things. So, for example, when I did this, uh, my first job that I ever had had sales implemented into it. So at the age of 16, I started to sell credit cards. I started to sell credit cards to individuals, and every time I sold a credit card, I got a commission. And I started to realize at a very early age that my income was capped. So in a salary-driven workspace, you start to work every day and you hope for a promotion, right? So if you have a good salary base, then each year maybe your employer will give you a 10% increase. Do they do that? Is it a 10% every year? Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know. I, I haven't had a job before, so I don't know. No, but usually they don't increase your income that much, right? So your hope is that if you do sales, that your job or your sales job will help you boost your income, right? But then there is a, a, there is a income ceiling in sales as well, right? Why? Because in a job, you have the sales cap of whatever your boss wants to pay you, but in a sales job, okay, what you have is hours, okay? You are limited to maybe eight hours a day. You can work 10. But remember, in sales, you have to meet people. So you have to meet them when they're awake, right? Even though you want to work at midnight, they'll be sleeping, okay? So you only have eight hours. So with eight hours, how many people can you actually meet? Maybe what? It takes about an hour to get there. It takes about 30 minutes to 40 minutes to explain it to them, and so on. So all together, it usually takes two hours. So two hours, divide that by eight. How many people can you meet? Four. There you go. We're all good at math. Very good. So four. Now, you meet four people. That means nothing, right? Just meeting four people means nothing. What do you then have to do to those four people? Sell them your product. Sell them your service. If you have a 100% success rate, then you have four people. So that's your income ceiling, right? But does everyone you meet buy your product? No, they do not. So even if you were to have a 50% success rate, that'd be amazing, but you don't. So I quit very quickly when I was 16. I started to sell credit cards. I was like, this is a waste of my time. I quit. And I started to understand that that's not what I wanted to do. So if it's not A, and if it's not B, then what is C? C is what we call business, okay? So a business is something that is much, much, much more high risk. So a low risk business can be something that nowadays we will say is free, right? Free to $10,000, low risk. There are $10,000 to $50,000 ones, and the most brick and mortar ones are about two hundred dollars plus, Okay, so brick and mortar shops are ones that many individuals do not do. They're franchises that they are scared of doing. Because in order to get to the place of where you can invest, you have to have money saved. But if you're only making $5,000 
a month and only saving $1,000 a month, how many years do you have to save to make 200 k In one year, you'll be able to save $12,000. Times that by 10, it's 120. So in 20 years' time, you'll be able to start one business. So if you started your business, I mean, if you started saving when you're 25, 20 years later, how old are you? 45. 45, you have the first opportunity to start your own business, right? But if you fail, what happens? No more time. <laughs> There's no more time for you. So it's a one-shot thing. And that's why people don't start, and they don't do this, and they go up here somewhere. And up here somewhere is always riskier. You'll be thinking you're saving money doing those things, but you spend 5000 lose it, 5000 lose it, 5000 lose it. It doesn't seem like you're losing a lot of money, but in the end, it all adds up. In 20 years' time, if you've invested $5,000 multiple, multiple times, it all adds up. So what are the different types of businesses that we can do right now then? Right now, what are the different types that we can do? And then I want you as the audience to agree with me or to tell me if it's something that you think you can do, okay? So I can see all you. I want you to raise your hand, okay? So free businesses. What are free businesses other than Atomy, okay? Other than Atomy. So we'll put MLMs up here, okay? MLMs are free, right? What are other free businesses that you can do? YouTube. Okay, a lot of people are doing YouTube, right? Raise your hand if you know what YouTube is. Everybody, I hope, right? If you don't know what YouTube is, there is a problem. So everybody knows what YouTube is, right? So YouTube allows you to make an ID, and everybody is allowed the freedom to become a creator. And if you become a creator and you have subscribers and your content is good, then you make money, right? So everybody in this room can become millionaires through YouTube. Agree or disagree? See, I disagree. Now, you may agree, but I disagree, so let me tell you why. You have to know the differences between business. First thing that you need in business is money, okay? There are three things that you need. One, two, three. First thing you need is money. If you do not have money, you cannot start a business, okay? There are few businesses like YouTube that you can start for free because everybody has a smartphone. And on the smartphone, there is a mic and a camera. And if you can make content with a mic and a camera, you have the freedom to, what, upload your video for others to watch. Now, the issue becomes two, content, okay? C, if you do not have good content, if you do not have good service, if you do not have good product, your business will fail. So you're creating a failing business. Your business will fail when your capital fails. Okay, so let's say that you started a business that's not very competitive and you have $200,000 saved. Let's say you started and you spent $100,000 on starting your business and every single month it costs $10,000 to run your rent and expenses and all those things, right? So how much time do you have before you have to close your door? You only have less than a year, right? Less than a year before you close your door. So you can only remain open as long as your capital allows you to. So you have a failing business. If you have a million dollars, maybe you'll be lucky in 10 years. But for 10 years, you're just going to be losing money. Understand? Next thing that you have to think about is what? You have to think about the management aspect of it. And this has lots of things inside of it. If you are not able to manage your individuals, whether it's logistics or hu uh, human resources, whatever it may be, you will never be able to what? You will never be able to scale your business, so therefore your business will fail. Now, the average individual will not be able to do all these things. That's the issue. So let's start with a very basic one. Let's say that you want to open up a coffee shop. Coffee shops are the most basic ones that you can do, right? Because all you have to do is have money to buy the equipment needed and do the interior design, right? Everybody can do that. Doesn't take any special skills. Next, all you have to do is buy coffee beans. It's very easy. It's different from making hamburgers, right? Making hamburgers are much more difficult than making coffee. Would you agree? Okay, so if you can source a good product then you'll be able to somewhat leverage your um, business. But the issue is what? Everybody knows and understands that there are dominant 
companies in each field, okay? There are dominant companies. For example, if you think about a hamburger, what business comes to mind? McDonald's, right? Did I teach you about McDonald's? No. Did you study McDonald's 101? No, but why do you have McDonald's come to your mind? Because they have marketed to you for many years. Therefore, what they have done is dominated the market. If I say coffee, what comes to mind? Starbucks. Did I market that to you? Did you study Starbucks? No. But those uh, companies are what dominate the market. So therefore, if I, JYP, Ju Young Park, have a coffee shop, and next door to my coffee shop is a Starbucks, which one are you going to go to? <laughs> Only you would come, that's why I would go bankrupt. <laughs> Everybody else would go to Starbucks, right? I will go bankrupt because the market already has decided who the winner is. I have to fight for my market share. So it's a it's an uphill battle for me, right? So I have to try to provide better quality than Starbucks. I have to try to provide better price than Starbucks. All these things are an uphill battle for me. So therefore, it's going to cost a lot of money, because that's marketing, to try to win that war. But it will not happen. That's why they're still on top. That's why they're remaining the top. That's why other companies have a difficult time trying to drag them down. You cannot do it. So even if you have the necessary capital and you have the money to buy your coffee, then do you have the skills needed to manage and structure and what? Build your business and scale up. And the answer is no. People do not. Raise your hand if you can do all these things. I bet you only a few hands will go up in this room. Everybody else will put their hands up by giving up, right? That's, oh, not me. It won't be a hands up because I can do it. And that's the reality of individuals who are struggling working two to three, five, two to three jobs and working paycheck to paycheck. The reality of the average individual is that they do not have the necessary skills to get out of their current financial situation. Yes or no? Yes, right? But if you could provide them with a gift, a tool to drag them, to help them, to pull them up out of this, don't you think that that's valuable? That's very valuable. And that is the mindset that CEO Park has. That's why he created a company called Atomy. And Atomy is structured in a way where we are giving back and sharing. And that is because the company was created from the viewpoint and aspect of Christian foundations where CEO Park wants to distribute and show the love of Christ. And by doing what? Providing individuals who lack, right, the ability, the gift, the tool of Atomy. Because if you know anything about Christianity, you know that salvation is the ultimate gift and the gift of salvation is free. It is free. Therefore, this business called Atomy is an opportunity for average individuals who do not have the necessary skills to grab hold of, and if they desire deeply to succeed, they can succeed. And that's why I believe many of you in this room will become successful, because all you need in Atomy is the desire to succeed. Anything else, I don't know if that's true. A lot of individuals tell me so many famous quotes. And even Dale Carnegie, he says, if you desire fervently with a burning desire to succeed, he says that you will become successful. But I proved that wrong. If I desire to become an NBA player, am I going to become an NBA player? I can desire it all day long. That's all I can think about. I can write it on the top of my uh, bedroom roof, I mean my uh, ceiling, and I can read it every single day. Every time I open the door on top of the sink, wherever it may be, I can say, become an NBA player, become an NBA player. But that's not reality. I will not become an NBA player. And even if I do, I won't become a successful one. Will I? Maybe. If you think, then come get my signature, okay? <laughs> So that's the reality that we live in. We live in a reality where it is not just desire-based, but desire is needed. Without desire, you won't do anything.
You won't take action. So that's why I said being a employee is also a very good experience. Because if you are a good employee, you understand and respect time. You understand and respect the necessary things that you must do to continue and maintain your job. Now, the difficult, time, the difficult part of business is this. If you lack discipline, you will fail because you have no boss. But if you are fearful of losing your job, if you're an employee, then what will happen? You will do the things necessary. So I want you all to take in your experience as having a job, being an employee. And I want you to apply that, and I want you to see how that applies to this business called Atomy, okay? So now we understand that, yes, you need effort, a lot of effort. The more, the better, okay? And you need ability to become successful. But in Atomy, we've created a luck-based system. People don't like luck. They say, if you talk about luck, then that goes against all the hard work that I did, right? People say that uh, brings down what I put in. But I want you to look at it like this. I am lucky. You are lucky. We are all lucky, okay? But at the same time, yes, we need these things. But watch. Watch what I mean. In other MLMs, in other businesses, you have to have the necessary ability, skills. So I said you need money. I said you need content, service, product, and at the same time, management skills. So if you do not have all these things, then you will not have a successful business. We agree, right? So raise your hand if you lack any one of these things. Raise your hand if you lack any one of those things. All right. So most of us in the room, we lack. So if you don't have luck, you will never succeed. Agree? Okay, so you do need luck. Without luck, it won't work. But this is a strategic kind of luck. There are two different kinds, okay? Duplicatable success is not lucky, right? It's hard work driven with a little luck, okay? If you can't duplicate it, it's 100% luck. For example, winning the lottery, that is luck, right? That is non-duplicatable. If it was duplicatable, please teach me. I would like to know. But winning the lottery, you cannot duplicate it. Agreed? Because it's a random number of events that take place, and then you get it. You can't duplicate it. Can you duplicate success anatomy? Yes. But do you know when your success anatomy will happen? No. So therefore, you need luck. So let me show you what that looks like. Every single business in the world requires your ability, but Atomy created a luck-based system. A lot of people do not understand what I mean by these things, okay? So raise your hand, okay, if you think you can get an A if I was to give you a test today on a Korean proficiency test. Raise your hand very high. Oh, not very many people, huh? Why will you not be able to get an A? Because you lack Korean proficiency skills. Very easy. Now, I think there will be at least one person in here who can get an A, right? Would you agree? There's at least one person. It may not even be me, right? But I know that there's somebody in here who will get an A. Now, how will it be that if one person in this room can get an A, that everybody can get an A? Come on. By cheating off of her paper. Right? Now, we have been taught that cheating is bad. Licking on somebody else's paper is bad, right? But what if she wants to share her answers with you? That's called teamwork. <laughs> right? Then that's good. So if you want to become successful in anything that you do, teamwork equals good. As long as we don't look down upon that. So the way for everybody to pass this test is to go look off of the person's paper who you know will do well. And I've done this before. Not that I've cheated, but I have, yes. 
I'm talking about when I became a university professor, I put this to the test. And I've done this as a uh, field study for my students. So what I did was I gave everybody the answers. Okay, I gave everybody the answers to the test that they will be having in two weeks. And I thought if I gave everybody the answers, they would all pass the test. Wouldn't you think so? Yeah. But guess what? I guess my test was too long. Not everybody can memorize all the answers, so therefore, they could not pass the test, even though I gave them the answers, right? So I thought to myself, then how can I make sure that everybody who desires to pass, passes? So I gave everybody this lecture before the test. I said, all right, students, I will be stepping out of the room. I will give you 50 minutes I will allow you to look on your phone for the answers, to look in your book for the answers, to search online for the answers, and even ask your neighbor for the answers. And whatever you write down on your piece of paper, I will allow that answer to become yours. That's what I said, okay? And I left. And then I came back in 15 minutes later, collected all the tests, and sure enough, I still had people who failed. Who are the ones who failed? No desire, the ones who did not care to pass the test. But everybody else had the same answers. I wonder why. <laughs> but, the, but everybody else who wanted to pass the test, they all pretty much had the same answers. I could tell. They wrote the wrong answer for number two, but they scratched it out and then wrote what everybody else wrote. So what was I saying? I saw that in order for us to create something that will allow for everyone to succeed, I would have to level the playing ground. I would have to make it fair for everybody. But in the society that we grew up and learn in, that's called cheating. But in anatomy, we have created a system where we allow for all of you to come together to work with each other and to build upon each other's skill to shoot you to the top. That's why Atomy has an income ceiling. But Atomy does not limit your speed in terms of getting to that ceiling. That is where the beauty of the system comes in. So why is Atomy different? Atomy allows for you individuals like me okay, to become successful because we have unlimited downline leverage and we have skill sharing, right? That's what we call that. Not cheating, right? It's called teamwork. There may be one person who has to work harder than the other person, but it's still teamwork, okay? It still takes effort to copy the answers, okay? <laughs> yes? Of course. So active income to passive income, this one, two, three, four, five only works when all those things I just explained to you apply. When you're at the active income part of 100% your efforts, the one, this, okay, you can only go to two if you can build on top of this, okay? So active income in consumer building, I will give you a demonstration. In Atomy, it is 100% dependent on you to build your consumers. Would you agree? Okay. So you as a new IBO, independent business owner, contractor, what you'll do is you'll go out and look for people who need your products, right? So a lot of individuals will say, I can't do that. I don't know how to sell products. I can't do that. I don't know any people. I can't do that. I'm not a good public speaker. Whatever it may be. Raise your hand if you've heard these things, or even if this is you saying these things, right? You can say, oh, I have no network. Oh, I can't sell. I can't do all these things. Okay, that is not Atomy, okay? What is Atomy? Atomy is this, okay? Atomy wants to know if you brush your teeth. So raise your hand if you brush your teeth. Oh, my goodness, hands aren't going up. All right, we got to be careful, okay? I'm going to ask you again. Do you brush your teeth? Raise your hand, please. Okay, everybody brushes their teeth. Good. Now, did you brush your teeth before meeting Atomy? Yes, I hope so, okay? 
I don't think Adam was that revolutionary, okay? So you did brush your teeth. So let's think about the process of what it takes to brush your teeth. If you want to be somebody who brushes your teeth, you have to first obtain a toothbrush and a toothpaste, right? So that means that you have to give your money to someone to gain these products unless you own your own toothbrush or toothpaste factory. So raise your hand if you own your own toothbrush or toothpaste factory. Oh, we got one hand going up. You own one. No? Okay. So nobody owns a toothbrush or toothpaste factory. That means that you have to give somebody else money, okay? So maybe you're going to Target or Kohl's or wherever it may be to buy your toothbrush and toothpaste. So what Adamy is saying is, if you brush your teeth, you have to give your money to somebody anyways, so don't give your money to them but give your money to yourself and buy items as though you own a toothbrush factory and a toothbrush factory. Did I say the same thing? <laughs> Toothpaste. So confusing. <laughs> right? So if you can pay yourself, don't you think that would be the wiser thing to do? So if you own your own toothbrush factory, are you going to buy a Kohl's or at your own company? At your own company, right? So that is the concept. So do you need to learn how to sell? No. Do you need to learn how to sell? No. Atomy is not about selling. Selling is called direct selling, right? There are direct selling companies. Atomy is not a direct selling company. If it was, there'd be a margin. You would be able to gain higher mastership and buy products at a lower price then. A sales master will get 0%, right? A diamond master will get 20% off, right? And then a Sharon Rose master will get 30% off. You understand? That's how direct selling works. The higher you are in the level, the cheaper you get the product, and the higher markup you make and make money. So it's by selling you make money. But in MLM, network marketing, that is not how you make money. How you make money is by you using it, and then what? Sharing information that will allow others to change their consuming habit. And the more information that you share with more individuals, the more consumers you can create. That is network marketing, not direct selling, okay? So from here, it is 100% your ability so what do you have to do? You create consumers. Who are these consumers? You. You use it for yourself, okay? And then what do you do? You share information with other individuals about your experience. What kind of information do you share? Information that is going to give them value. Information that is going to give them what? Value. So if your friend does not have hair, do you think you need to share the shampoo with them? Just because you have three shampoos at home you got to sell, okay, that doesn't mean go to your friend who doesn't have any hair to share with them shampoo. They will be upset at you. They'll say, do you really care for me? Because <laughs> if you really cared for me, then you would come with something else, right? But if you go to them with shampoo, then you understand that it is for your own personal objective to get rid of shampoo. Right? So approach each individual that you meet with doing your homework, okay? Do your due diligence and see what does Jew want to hear from me, okay? And if you don't know what it is, meet them and ask them questions. You can say so. How are your teeth lately? How's your scalp doing? <laughs> Whatever it is, you can break the ice with simple questions. Or you can talk to them about your personal experience. For example, what I did was this. I did not have a big network. I started my business in Korea, but where was I born? In America. So I was a foreigner living in Korea, right? It may not look like that, but it is true, okay? So when I moved to Korea, I had zero network. I had no friends. And the only way that I could start the business was by introducing the products to my wife's friends 
or to the individuals that I was meeting. So I had the opportunity, and I was teaching English to a lot of aunties, okay? And I structured my lectures with my aunties on how to make money. <laughs> so they, we would read articles all the time, right? We would usually read articles about um, health, or we would read articles about dieting because they always wanted to diet, you know? Aunties who always want to die, raise your hand, you know. <laughs> or they wanted to read on ch child education and all these things, right? But when I met Adamy, I changed the topic, right, to making extra income. And then as I changed those things, I started to talk to them. And I said, hey, if you can make $200 a month extra, what, what would you think about that? She'd, she'd said, that'd be amazing. If I made $200 a month extra, that means that I can send my, send my son to another hagwon. I don't know if the son would be happy with that, but that's what they said, right? And they said that $200 extra a month would be able to help them go out for dinner once a month. And it would create good experiences, and I said, well, why aren't you doing that now? I already knew the answer, though, right? But I said, why aren't you doing that now? She said, oh, because my schedule is so erratic. I have to send my, my uh, kids to school, and then I have to do this at home, and then I have to do this, and then I have to go drink coffee with my girlfriends and all these things, right? So she said, I don't have a structured schedule, so therefore no one will hire me. I said, what if I could show you how to make money on your own terms. She said, really? That'd be great. And guess what I introduced her to? Adamy. And I sold her Hemohim and the six set because she needed it anyways. And these individuals started to do what? Consume the product. They were becoming consumers. That's, what, that's the process that I went through to get this first section, okay? And after I did that, the product started working. They were working really hard. I wasn't doing anything, but the products were working. And what happened was they went to two. And two is what? Around 75% of my effort because they became auto consumers. What are auto consumers? They decided on their own after using the product that they needed to buy it again. So the aunties that I was selling to, they were using skincare that was $300 on average for four set. Okay? So for eye cream, nutrition cream, lotion, toner, four things. Okay? That's what they would use. And it would cost them how much? Around $300 for four. That was cheap. But other individuals that I know... Just their eye cream alone was $230 a piece. And you know how they apply it? Have you ever seen ladies apply eye cream with this finger? No, they use this finger. <laughs> Why? Because it's tiny, right? You have to save it. But do you think it'd be better to apply with this finger? Of course, like this. You can do that with atomies, right? You can use atomy all over your face, not just your eye line, right? So I told them that. I said, listen, you're spending this much money on your product, but you're afraid to apply it because it's costing you so much. Is that right? She said, hmm, that's right. I said, then buy the Atomy one and just get two fingers and just... <laughs> and you won't even be able to use it all. And you'll get much better results. She said, whoa, that's a good idea. And she did that, and she loved it. So if you are accustomed to using a $300 product, but then you introduce a $150 product, then how much are they saving? They're saving half. They're saving half. That means that it's a 100% discount for them. It's a buy one, get one free deal, right? So when they're done using it, they will not go out and buy the $300 one that they, used to, that they used to use. Why? Because then they would have to spend another $150. So therefore, you're giving them value in terms of money, 
you're saving them $150 already. They can use that to do something else. So it's not just gaining commission anatomy, but through the use of products, you are saving money that you would, al you would be using as expense. And on top of that, the quality is better than most items that any individual uses. So therefore, you are changing consuming habit. Since you're changing consuming habit, they become auto consumers. They consume for themselves. Does that make sense? And then you can go to three. One, two, three. So how do you get to three? Three are part-time partners. These individuals are auto consumers who've been using not just one, but two, but three, but many items, and they have structured their downline in a way where they have an A line and a B line because they've been introducing it, and they got a commission. So these aunties are the best, right? They're very funny. What happens is when they get their first commission, they call me and they say, did you know that Adamy pays you? They say, I got a commission. I was like... I think I told you that a thousand times, you know, <laughs> that you can make money in Adam. She's like, no, you never told me that. If you would have told me I can make money in Adam, I would already be doing it. <laughs> have you heard that before? Yes. So what's your goal? To hurry up and get them to get that commission so they can see that it's real. And when they get that commission, they start to think about the other opportunities, not just $75 that they'll be getting, but what? They started to think, oh, I got this in three months. Maybe I can get this in two weeks. Maybe I can get this every day. Maybe I can get paid $1,600 a day. Their brain starts working. And then what happens? They start to do number one and number two with you. So now it's not just you building your A and B. But now it's this auntie who's also building her A and B with you. So what has now happened? It is just as though you have duplicated yourself. In other businesses, you would have to create another store. But for free, you've created your own store. Atomy has created its own. Atomy has created a system where you personally don't really need to do anything other than give them the information and continue to help them understand the information. And the product and price itself creates a system where you are able to create and duplicate yourself. That's the beauty of this system. And after that happens, what happens? You get to level four. What's level four? They're, they are what? Full-time. Full-time partners, FPs, full-time partners, you only invest 25% of your energy now in creating consumers, but you get better results than when it was you alone investing 100% of your energy on creating consumers. You see how that works? Because it's not just you doing it now. Now, if this person is full-time, that means that somebody on their downline is part-time. And they have consumers and consumers and consumers. And all these individuals, all their hard work, 100% of it becomes yours. That is teamwork. Would you agree? Or is that cheating? Teamwork. So this person may be good at a certain language. This person may be good at a certain skill. Whatever it is, they do this work not for you, but for them. Example, individuals today that you became sales masters and diamond masters, did you do that for yourself or for your sponsor? You did it for you, right? You're doing this business for you. You don't go in your ID each day and then look and then say, huh, I think sponsor Jew needs to get a commission today, so let me buy some Hemohame so he can get paid. Do you do that? No. You don't care about what's going on above you. You care about what's going on below you. You want to make sure that you're creating what's needed so that your income will go up. So these full-time partners are exactly that. But how do you get to five? How do you get to five? That's the question. Five is zero, right? Five is zero. So individuals in this room, if you've run your own business before, you know, no matter how 
big your business gets, okay, you don't get to go to zero, okay? For example, Atomy is a billion dollar company, but in the, in the rich dad poor dad quadrant that we talk about, businessmen have how many employees? More than 500. Atomy as a company itself doesn't even have 500 employees yet, and it's a billion dollar company. So is it easy to create a business, like the book says? No, we're all just self-employed, okay? Self-employed individuals are individuals with less than 500 employees, okay? So if you have less than 500 employees, you do not have the luxury of going to five. You don't. Even CEO Park has to go to work to sign the documents. He's not at zero. But who is at zero? If you really want to go to zero, there are only two options, okay? You have to have lots of money and buy stocks or real estate. That's it. And hire off individuals to do your real estate management, and you do zero of the work and just collect the funds, or have lots of stocks and collect dividends. That's the only way to get to real fives. But can Atomy get you to a real five? That's the question. If it can, isn't it amazing? Let's think about it one more time. If Atomy, a business that started off with zero down, no money down, can get you from zero all the way to five, 100% passive income, is it amazing, yes or no? It is amazing. There's no other business in the world that allows this. So let's do a test to see if this is true. Let's say that every single one of you in this room, you are making $20,000 plus a month. Are you happy with your income? Okay. Let's say that I show up as your sponsor, okay? You are my downline. And all of a sudden, I tell you, I say, Robin, terminate your account, sir. I don't want you to make $20,000 anymore. What will you say to me? Crazy man, you terminate your own account. <laughs> right? Jack, will you terminate your account for me? Of course not. So that means that you will continue to build your business. Even if I run away to some other foreign country, if you are continuing to build your business, it's inevitable that my PV will continue to go up, even though I do nothing. So my income will forever be passive. Make sense? That's why, Atomy, you can succeed and create passive income. No other business in the world will allow for this. So I'm going to go through the process again of how that works. Residual income is needed to create passive income, but there needs to be a structure where that is allowed. If Atomy was not an online shopping mall, in this day and age, this would never work. You would need active individuals to create income for you. In Korea, we have over 400, 500 products, and we have thousands more launching. Individuals who live in Korea are accustomed to using their smartphones to order products. Would you agree that many of you in this room, you are also accustomed to doing that? Because we know a company called what? Amazon. Amazon. Where do they do all their shopping usually? Online. So if you purchase a product, that means that you have to have a smartphone or a computer, right? A device in which to order. CEO Park created a company called IamKorea.com about 15 years ago. Okay? It failed. CEO Park is the same person as he is today as he was 15, 10 years ago. But why did it fail then and why did Atomy succeed now? You must think about these things. He had more products back then, but you know what the issue was? 90% of South Koreans right now own a smartphone. How many percent? 90%. That's one of the highest. Everybody owns a smartphone. Children walk around with smartphones, okay? 
That same place called Korea that CEO Park was in, 10 years ago, nobody had a smartphone. So when he created IamKorea.com and he needed aunties to buy lettuce, they would call him and ask him. They say, you know, I'm on your website, sir. I'm trying to buy this lettuce. Where do I put it? And you know what he would, told, he would tell them? He said, put it in the cart. A cart? What cart? I have no cart in my house. This may not be funny to you because you understand what a cart is. But to people back then, they did not understand putting items in a shopping cart and ordering. So the business failed. Now we live in a time where internet shopping is normal. Many people do it. And it will be done much more in the future. And we live where what? Shipping is faster. And what? We individuals, we are individuals who want to create wealth and understand the power of the internet and what? The smartphone. So these are the things that are needed. But let's say that you have that figured out. That's the logistical aspects. Next is product. If you do not have a product, like I explained, if you're using a $300 product and then Atomy's $150 product comes to mind, you save 100%, so therefore it's like buying one, getting one free. You have what? You have consumers who will be loyal to you. Why are they loyal to you? They are not loyal to you because you're pretty and handsome. They are loyal to you because they're saving themselves money. If another company pops up, Atomy 2.0, right? And they start selling an item that is cheaper and better. Do you think they'll remain here or go there? I will go there. I will also go there. Why will I stay in Atomy? I, will, I wouldn't stay in Atomy. There's no reason for me to be loyal to Atomy if I know my business is going to fail. Because this is a business. Understand? So in this business, we must understand that if we're not able to give value, you will never be able to create consumers. If you do not create real consumers, you will not be able to make residual income because they won't repeat their sales. If you do not create residual sales in a system where they, may, they are able to buy on their own, meaning they all have their own IDs, they all have their own internet accounts. If you don't have that and you have to put in the orders for them, it will always be active. But you all can teach your partners to buy products on their own. Yes or no? As they buy products on their own, it is no longer on you to ship them products. Because they are the ones getting products from the company. Therefore, it is real, real residual income. And then that turns into passive income because your business will continue to sustain itself and grow, not because you have repeat customers, but because you have other active business partners building on top of what is already built. If you only have individuals who are consuming only the products they were consuming, you don't have a safe and healthy passive income business because there's no chance for it to continue to grow up. But as you do this with your business partners, it continues to grow and grow and grow. And that is the reason why you're able to become successful in this business. Because it creates true passive income for you. This means that when I, Ju Young Park, decide to quit, no longer do Atomy, okay, I will still get a paycheck. For example, let's say a situation happens where I'm hospitalized, okay, Let's say that I ate lots of hemorrhoid, but I still got hospitalized. And I'm laying in bed in a coma, okay? Do you think I will still get my income that I'm getting now? Yes or no? It will be greater than what I'm getting now. Because I have people who are continuing to build daily. So it is inevitable that my income will never come down. My income continues to go up every single year. It'll keep going up and it'll hit the income ceiling. And when it hits the income ceiling, what happens? I can retire. That's the retirement for Atomy. And as you retire in Atomy, we have another foundation for you to come to called the Dreamy Foundation. 
we as individuals, once we become a certain level in atomy, your success is inevitable. So in order for your success to become inevitable and get you to five, you must create a business structure like this. So I'm going to tell you this secret. Should I tell you the secret? I don't know if you, I don't know if you want to hear it. Are you sure? Oh, I can't hear you. Maybe I'll just tell you next time then.